happening everybody boy big brando and welcome to another episode of printing money now if you've been following along from the very beginning you understand where i came up with the concept who i was going to be selling it to my whole design process how i tested out the design before i went into production and my first marketing strategy this one right here is going to be my second marketing strategy once sales started to plateau now if you watch the very last video you understand what i was doing i was utilizing those facebook groups like crazy i started my instagram page and business was booming we're making a lot of sales things were going very very well for us I'm printing shirts and selling shirts every single day I'm building the trust within these Facebook groups and the Disneyland community I'm creating quality t-shirts people are trusting me to do business with me and on top of that making a lot of cool friends but my first marketing strategy wasn't gonna last forever and I knew it I was really relying on that shock value with my first strategy right this is a brand new t-shirt that I wanted everybody to see I'm still operating Operating off of one design only and as I'm moving forward the groups are kind of losing interest maybe they already bought the t-shirt or maybe they already seen the t-shirt numerous times within this group and the shock value is no longer there so me personally whenever I come up with a marketing strategy I like to see that plan all the way through meaning I would hate to cut it short before it actually matures or I would hate to see it through its full course until it dies out and there's no coming back from that so what I like to do is once I start to notice that sales either take a dip or start to plateau that's when i need to implement my second strategy on how to rebuild myself and reinvent myself to the same audience easier said than done but also this is the challenge that i like when it comes to running a brand my main goal always is to get a complete stranger to be interested in my designs and my t-shirts and then have them follow through and buy my designs and my t-shirts. So first marketing strategy was shock value. Hit them in these Facebook groups and get my t-shirt into the faces of thousands on top of thousands of people. Second marketing strategy is sustainability. Making sure that people continue to buy that same t-shirt and continue to be excited around that same t-shirt. But how did I do that? So once a lot of these Facebook groups started to catch on to what I was doing by redirecting people to my page so they could buy the t-shirts, there was a lot of other people starting to do the same exact thing. There's people that were selling like homemade Disney ears or Mickey ears. And what they would do is they would do the same thing I was doing, post the ears in these Facebook groups. And then when people say, hey, where'd you buy that? They would send them to their personal page. And which is cool, I was doing it. You know, a lot of people started to catch on what I was was doing so they started doing it that was the little loophole within these disney groups but once a lot of people start doing it that's when the admins catch on and then they start to crack down so now my second plan was to start giving away free stuff and i'm not talking about giving away dozens of free t-shirts what I started doing was I started using the very big popular groups, the ones that had 50 to 100K members in. I would do free giveaways specifically for these groups. So let's say that one of the groups was called like Disney Annual Pass Holder Lovers or something like that. This group had close to 100K active members in there. What I would do is I would post a picture of myself at Disneyland wearing the t-shirt and then on top of that I would say find me in the parks today and win a free t-shirt while supplies last and on top of that I would say this is just for the Disney annual pass holder lover group or whatever the group's name was so now I'm doing a specific giveaway for the group so now the admins of the group are like, oh, that's cool, man. This guy's giving away free stuff to members of this group. We celebrate him. So now they repost it, right? Now they keep bumping up the post because I'm doing something for the group. On top of that, I'm at Disneyland. I only have three free t-shirts, right? They don't know how many shirts I have, but I only have three with me. So as I'm walking around Disneyland, I post that right when I get there. So I'm walking around the parks, me and my wife. And then somebody comes up to me. Hey, you're from that group. Are you the one giving away the free t-shirts? Yeah, that's me. Bingo, what size you wear? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, you know what i just gave that one out but i only have extra large large and medium left so they're like all right cool give me the extra large as i give it to them i take a picture with them right so i'm like hey check it out so and so found me he got his free shirt so now he's posting it hey i ran into the churro guy he's giving away free shirts today if you find him in the park hit him up he'll give you a free shirt so now my dumb face and my page and my shirts are circulating around this group and on the person's personal Instagram page and their Twitter and their Snapchat and whoever else they wanna send it to. They're sending the same picture I posted. Me and this person, I'm giving them the free shirt. They're telling them to follow me and look for me in the park so they could get a free shirt also. So now my name and my shirt and my face is spread amongst the Disneyland groups all over again. Now I am reinventing myself again within these same groups that I've been active in 
for the last few months. So now people are coming up all over the place, right? People are finding me, hey man, you're the guy with the shirts. So until those three shirts are gone and I have the pictures with the people I'm giving them to and I'm posting them, now my last post within there is saying, hey, our shirts are all gone. Thanks for playing along. Stay tuned for the next giveaway. So now the Facebook group admins are happy with me for actually giving the free stuff out because I have proof of me giving it to these active members. And now we have so many other people that are at the park also that were looking for me or that couldn't make it to the park and say, oh man, that's such a cool shirt. That's so cool. You're giving them away for free. How can I buy one now? Like I said, I reinvented myself again within this group and now they're coming back to the page to shop with me. One, I'm adding value to the group. I'm not asking anything from the group, but I'm adding value to the group by giving away something for free. Two, people love this group so much that they're like, man, that's cool that you're giving stuff away for free. I didn't get a chance to find you in the parks or I didn't get a chance to come to the park that day, but your shirt's cool. How can I buy one? Now sales are going back up, going from plateauing at like 20 shirts a day. Now we're going back up to 40, 45, 50 shirts a day. All because I gave away three free shirts. See what I mean? But it's not just me giving away the shirts, it was me adding value to this group of people. So out of 100,000 people that are in this group, all I had to do was give away three free ones to start selling to all 100,000 again. And now they're getting excited about myself and my t-shirts all over again. So now I'm reinventing myself within this group. See how that works? And with doing this, it's cool to actually see the people that are buying the shirts and interested in the shirts and seeing how active these people are, are within these Facebook Facebook groups because on the days that I would do these giveaways if I got there at 10 in the morning by 12 o'clock my t-shirts would all be gone and then the post would kind of be dead but people would still be commenting like oh where are you at now where are you at I'm here are looking for you this and that so it keeps the post very active the engagement in the comment section is cool and then I get to meet the people because everybody's coming up to me now and saying hey are you the guy with the shirts are you the churro guy that's usually what people started to call me after a while was because I had the churro shirts I would always put my face on there so people knew who was making the shirt and who was selling the shirt so when people tried to steal the design people could call him out and be like you're not the original dude making that shirt it's him because i'm active in all these facebook groups and they're dated time stamped on when i posted in these groups with my face so now i have the digital receipt on how active and how long i've been doing this and selling this design and selling this t-shirt because it's my original design. So anytime somebody tries to steal it, the people in these groups fight for you. They're like, hey man, you can't be posting that shirt or you stole that design from that dude because the churro man's the one that been selling that first. And then they call them out early. So that part shuts down the copycats because I've already asserted myself within these groups and I made a name for myself within these groups for them to fight for me because they are loyal followers of the churro squad now. Because once again, I'm adding value to the groups by giving away free t-shirts and not just selling the t-shirts see what i mean and if you wanted to see how all of this stuff worked you could go to instagram and type in the churro squad you'll see the pictures with a lot of the winners that i was giving away the free t-shirts the engagement i was doing how i was reposting a lot of people on the churro squad instagram page to create engagement get people excited tease new products and all that stuff man like i said i started the churro brand one to make money but two for the content for patreon Patreon was seeing all of this stuff in posts as it was happening, as a design was coming up, as the ideas were flowing out, as I was testing the stuff at Disneyland, I was updating Patreon daily on what was going on with the churro brand because I wanted to start this whole brand just for Patreon so they could see what I was doing, how I was doing it. Like I said, this was like in 2018, 2019, years later, now it's coming to YouTube in the printing money series. So I hope the information shared in these videos helps you guys out and enlightens you on my thought process and how I actually do this stuff. And like I said, if you wanted to see how all of this worked, you can always check out the Churro Squad on Instagram. I'm no longer active on there. I don't run it no more. I haven't posted in there in like the last three or four years, but I want you guys to be fully aware of how I run every brand. It's the same exact principles. Doesn't matter what brand I'm running, I do the same exact things and it all boils down to having a target audience creating something for that target audience and then executing the plan to that target audience 
So I appreciate everybody for watching. I appreciate everybody for rocking with the Print and Money series. We still have a lot to dive into and we're just scraping the surface right now. So I'm gonna start creating the playlist now and then I'll be dropping all the new videos into that playlist and on here weekly for you guys. For anybody that was curious on how I run these brands and how I'm getting sales and what I'm doing, especially for the people that think you need to release a bunch of different t-shirt designs. I'm living proof that you can make a bunch of money just releasing one t-shirt t-shirt design in one colorway and operate like that for a long time and make a bunch of money doing it. If you guys got any questions, make sure you leave it in the comments. Follow me on Instagram, BigBrandoTV. Catch you guys on the next one, man. Yeah.